This is Suveer Saran, and I'm here to talk with Dr. Tharoor about my uh, book, Instamatic. This book is what we are talking about. And for the first time in my life, I'm actually nervous. Um, Dr. Tharoor is one of those people that inspires all kinds of reactions from people that um, enjoy writing, reading, literature, politics, and humanity. So it's an exciting uh, moment for me to be in conversation with Dr. Tharoor. Good evening, Ajay Sareen. Good evening, Amir. Good evening, Lubna. Thank you for uh, putting me in front of the camera. Hello, Charlie and mom. So my mother's joined in technology. Dr. Tharoor, are you joining us? Hi, Dr. Tharoor. Hi again, Subir. Well, first of all, uh, I, I think we're back now. I'm sure you've been talking while I've been uh, struggling to get connected. But just to say congratulations, first of all, on the launch Thank of your you. new book, Instamatic. Uh, for those Thank who you. don't know, Subir uh, um, is actually far better known as a master chef. And um, as the first Indian uh, restaurateur to actually have a Michelin star in New York for Devi, which I have patronized, as I have so his earlier works. So we tell us, I think, tell the audience a little bit about um, about yourself. You grew up in Delhi and I went to the States Delhi. as a student, right? As a 20-year-old, Dr. Tharoor. As a 20-year-old. And you didn't go to be a chef. You went to study something else. What was that? I went to study graphic design and art history. Uh, to be an artist, to be a painter, a photographer, a sculptor, and accidents kept happening in my life that led to me cooking and hosting and entertaining and catering. And the next thing I knew, a man gave me money to open a restaurant. So Fantastic. a series of accidents led me to there, There's a story I've heard from your family that you uh, were actually very busy um, uh, studying at the School of Visual Arts and cooking for everybody who would come and eat. Is that right? Were you offering yes. free food in your kitchen to everyone? Yep, that so, was the so story. That, that, that makes you a great chef and a bad businessman. <laughs> Truly. I, that's, that's what artists are. We hate making money. We love indulging others. Excellent. And then what about the photography? How long have you been um, interested in taking photographs creatively? From my teens and uh, from my mid-teens. And I had this Yashika camera and SLR and then an icon and then when the first iPhone came, I was one of the first people to understand that you could move your finger on the screen and change the light on an iPhone and also <laughs> use the saturation button to intensify the colors. And when I, uh, so just, I loved, I loved using the iPhone for photography because it made it very immediate. You didn't have to wait to take out a camera to, uh, you know, put it in focus. You could click and capture a moment better than you could with any other camera. Wow. Okay, well, that's something that I don't know yet. I'll have to get private lessons on the side from you. But, um, but then um, you have been taking pictures on your iPhone, presumably mainly for family and friends. You haven't published a book of photographs before this. Um, no, I haven't. And then something happened in your life, which I think you should tell, tell the audience. What was it? What happened? You in, had a stroke. Uh, in 2018, a stroke of luck uh, gave me a uh, TI, a transient ischemic attack, a mini stroke. And that uh, led me to have seven falls that were uh, severe concussions that led to uh, blind, the lack of vision in one eye, only three to five foot on the other. And my arms were disabled, my speech for a while. I had terrible noise. It felt like I had a helicopter taking off in my head at all times. And every couple of hours, a critter like a a uh, crocodile or something trying to get out of my uh, uh, scalp. And I had to live with that for almost 11 to 12 months. And in that time, the iPhone became a closer friend and social media like Instagram for the most part, where I would share a photograph that I could barely see, but I enjoyed playing with. And a story that my head thought I should, uh, that I would think about, I would share them and people would react. And that led me to think I'm not all wasted in a vegetable. And that's the beginning of the book, Shashi. Right. Well, that's a very promising beginning. And then your choice of subject matter. 
you you had come back to india partially under family pressure after the stroke saying don't go and drive yourself to an early grave in america come back home where you're needed and loved and you came back um, your mom brother sister in law are all here and um, and while you were here what gave you the idea to suddenly start taking photographs especially photographs through the windshield of your car what's the story there shashi you know my mother is the only person who knows this i don't think i've even told charlie this or my mom is told charlie that i would start crying middle of the day in the middle of the night i could barely sleep and she would touch me and say baba there is tomorrow don't worry and right while i couldn't walk while i couldn't talk i i had lost memory i would not recognize people till somebody told me really i i was at a loss for words and i'm a boy who talks a lot a person <laughs> who can actually give you a run for the money yes and you do I, and my mom uh, would give me solace but to see i would take photographs from the iphone to bring the world to me closer to my eyes and it was like the iphone was like having a a person talking to me but literally this close and on the iphone i could see what was fuzzy and hazy in reality so it became my connection to the world that i had not been lost to and i could then all of a sudden see much clearer than my mind could or my eyes could right but then at the same time not all the pictures are clear you deliberately taken some of them to look blurred uh, uh, as if you've taken them perhaps slightly out of focus tell us tell us why is is it partially a reminder of your own condition at that time i think a lot of them were shaky because the car was moving and my hands were shaking and in others i've deliberately uh, made them a little out of focus to uh, make a point to the reader of looking at life not with black and white clarity but sometimes living in the grays and learning to scratch a little deeper to delve a little further beyond our comfort level to look beyond the horizon to what may be unexpected but may be waiting for us to discover and that was the idea of these images but you know many people when they look at photographs are expecting the clarity of the photographer's eye what they want is to see things more clearly through the lens of the photographer than they can themselves from their own eyes now you are conveying a different sort of message why and ever, what is it have i ever conformed to any message my mother would ask <laughs> um i wasn't i have always wanted to be me a uh, conundrum a uh, confused soul who is proud to be who he is uh, not conforming to any standard um, that anybody has expected me to conform to but living life in the moment uh, in mindfulness to the what's happening around me and connected to my reality and also to the moment in which i'm living breathing and being inspired if it demands for me to be a little shaky it's okay i can own it i can um, i can share it and i can answer questions about it and i think that confidence led me to not be afraid to share those images that were unclear did i fail you with them no i think i think actually like all good the art you you're trying to make the reader or the viewer work for their pleasure uh, because in many ways the pictures and of course i haven't talked about the text that accompany them they're also important because you have these short essays a paragraph two paragraphs accompanying each picture and i would say the picture and the text both ask questions rather than provide answers so if you look at the book you are forced to make yourself think you are forced to see a world beyond uh, what we might immediately grasp visually and i think that's very striking um i i remember some photographs where you are looking at the world through the rain spattered window or uh, windshield of a of a moving car uh, the sometimes you're looking at the landscape but it's not a picture of the landscape it's a picture of the la- landscape through a window uh many of your subjects ordinary people would say by these are banal subjects some couple is walking on the road so we sort of taken a picture but you've also written things about them and what i struck what struck me was that um what is interesting about what savir has done here is that you you savir you have actually shown us people we might just take for granted in our normal days or ignore in our normal days i never noticed them in our normal days 
as we glimpse them from our cars and scurry through our our lives and you have told us hey guys notice these people i have taken this picture i am showing you that they're worth paying attention to i think that's really quite remarkable you've actually taken something that is quite banal in our quotidian our daily lives our normal existence and made us sit up and pay attention to things we otherwise don't pay attention to and that's really really remarkable Oh thank you Shashi I was an unremarkable creature laying in my mother's bed at age 45 ready to die but not dying ready to call it quit but not quitting and if I could be indulged by such incredibly loving family and friends every human being out there in the world needs to be given a moment to shine a little indulgence by all of us and a chance to become themselves and I think the message of the book whether it's talking about the church in Tuscany where I saw the amazing gilded cathedral and I said this is a gold that tarnished by the tar that is the sulfurous odor of the laziness of the church to evolve you know all we have to look not at the shining glimmer of that gold at the in the walls but of all the horrible horrors being being committed in the name of religion by the religious and you know that's the kind of thinking i'm hoping people will look at that not everything that we see is gold and not everything that we want to judge is worthy of being judged and those creatures that we have judged unworthy of our time are sometimes deserving of the most and it could give us most to benefit from very well said i must say i i want to add a word about your prose because it's gentle it's moving it's sometimes searing um and you yourself have gone through a lot of pain i think some of that comes through in not just your pictures but in your word pictures um if i can quote something you wrote um you you take these pictures of of people and you say full of blood in their veins ticking hearts thinking brains these are people humans too with bones and flesh and bodies too i i have to say that that is something that people say hey we don't need to be reminded of that we are all of those things and yet we do need to be reminded don't we because we do not pay attention in real life to these seemingly inconsequential ordinary human beings zipping past indeed um, tell and, me more what um, what, 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 mm, go on go on yeah and i found that these ordinary uh, people these ordinary vignettes of life have magic in them that you know when i would look at them i would find the magic of india that the everyday hustle and bustle the noise the cacophony or the see the you know the sounds that would grating inside my brain and further grating because of the noise on the street when i would look beyond the noise beyond the filth beyond the kichad the dirt on the streets i would find this smiling face that perhaps had not eaten in weeks but had that humanity that we are lacking with all the riches we have and all the creature comforts and immediately i would forget my own pain and suffering and i would say that's the reason i'm a lucky man and i shouldn't be crying and i should be smiling and believing in life and living so you know it's it, that's the amazing uh, magic that happens when you look beyond the beyond well let me let me say to everybody that uh, this is a book that really opens our eyes for us and helps us alter our own thinking and so uh, i don't think really uh, anyone can get more from a book than those two things opening your eyes altering your thinking and i would urge you all to grab suvir saran's instamatic but so we tell us a little more about what else you're planning is there another book on will it be photographs will it be prose what are you thinking of next especially uh, during this lockdown period you may have all heard the lockdown has been extended till the end of the month um i would say that this is a golden opportunity for you to put some more thoughts down for us i write sashi every day i have not the caliber of writing that you do but i i i i would urge people if there's anything i've learned in life and if i could share with anybody is that an iphone and a, a the email a part of an iphone can teach you a teach you how to click an image and then put your memory to thought and into words and when you file them away you've had a shrinks meeting every day you've gone to therapy without you knowing it and as you've written your diary in your phone you've had that conversation with the therapist that you never had to pay for you've uh, had a cathartic cleansing 
and you've actually captured some beauty that you may realize was beautiful months later so you've done all of that so i'm doing all of that daily but i write because i uh, it just teaches me to appreciate what i have it takes out some of the anger the frustrations the uh, 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 the pain the suffering the all the wallowing that i may have to do if i didn't write gets out of me by writing i also uh, want to perhaps find a place closer to uh, my home in delhi where i can start cooking and feeding people i have gurgaon the house of celeste which i can't wait to go back to to feed people and yes um, tell tell them about that because obviously unfortunately that's become a victim of the lockdown right it is a victim of the lockdown we are closed i'm separated from it we have that border between gurgaon and delhi that people can't go back and forth from and uh, the house of celeste was a modern indian restaurant as proud of the grace as the photographs of the blurriness uh, we had butter chicken that with a new uh, uh, a new little element to it which was crispy fried chicken uh, served with the makhani sauce we had golgappas but they came without water but became liquid in your mouth so yeah. um, you know for me life is amazing when it's full of surprises and a little spunk and a little naughtiness and of course uh, good reading good writing and um uh, good adventures together so i'm hoping that um, post lockdown i'll uh, be able to go to gurgaon and also find a home to feed people also in delhi uh, closer in delhi that will be very good for all of us who are dreading crossing the border to gurgaon to come and sample your wonderful fare don't dread it's acha dekhi sabir kuch log aapke comments mein keh rahe hain ki hindi mein bhi kuch boli aap bol sakte hain मैं बिल्कुल हिंदी में बोल सकता हूँ तो आप मेरे से हिंदी में बात करिए मैं आपको हिंदी में जवाब दूंगा तो मैं यही जो पूछ रहा था कि आपकी किताब में आपने क्या किया और क्यों किया और ऐसे जो आईफोन से फोटोग्राफ खींच के आपने किताब बनाई इसके बारे में हिंदी में जरा दो लफ्ज सुना ये सबको जो मेरी किताब जो है इंस्टोमेटिक वो मेरी जिंदगी की कहानी है जो पिछले दो साल में मैंने गुजारी है उसमें मैं देख नहीं पाता था सुन नहीं पाता था बोल नहीं पाता था ठीक तरह से मेरी यादगार थोड़ी सी जंग लग गया था मेरी मेमोरी को तो वो सब मैंने इस किताब में मैंने लिखा है वो कहानियां पर ज्यादातर वो इंसानियत के बारे में है वो इंसानियत जो हम लोगों को एक साथ लेके आती है जो हम लोगों को बताती है कि हम लोग सब पहले इंसान है और अगर हम एक दूसरे को झिलमिल करने दे तो हम बिखरे बिखरे तारे होंगे पर झिलमिल एक होंगे एंड uh, मेरे जो पब्लिशर uh, है वो डी ए वी स्कूल के साथ एसोसिएटेड है उनके पिताजी वो लोग मिलाप पब्लिकेशन सबसे पुराने हिंदुस्तान की उर्दू और हिंदी न्यूज पेपर के पब्लिशर है योगी सूरी प्रिया सूरी हसबेंड एंड वाइफ वो मेरे एडिटर और पब्लिशर है उनके पिताजी डी ए वी स्कूल सिस्टम के और जी बी डी ए वी के प्रेजिडेंट है एंड उन लोगों ने मेरी किताब में इसलिए इन्वेस्ट करा क्योंकि उन्होंने देखा कि मैं हिंदी तो बोल सकता हूँ पर मैं हिंदुस्तानी संस्कार को बहुत महत्व देता हूं अपनी जिंदगी में मेरे लिए वेदांतिक वे जो वेदांता की जो हमारी जिंदगी है हिंदुस्तान की जिसमें हम लोग सब एक है वो मेरा मेरी जिंदगी की गाइडिंग प्रिंसिपल है तो सॉरी शशियारो नो गुड मैंने सताईस साल में हिंदी नहीं बोली है पर मैं बोल सकता हूँ अब मेरे मैं भी विदेश में था पर नाउ दीपल डिमांडिंग वी स्विच बैक टू इंग्लिश है how outnumbered the, th- the two or three who asked for hindi so we can go back to english just to say that uh, suveer has actually uh, done a remarkable job at the house of celeste i've been there i recommend it strongly uh, somebody has asked whether the mothers day post of amul items was a paid post i can assure you it was not uh, but both suveer and i are fans of amul and uh, neither of us is paid by them no um as far as uh, as far as um, suveer's work is concerned there is one more aspect i think one should mention i've not given him a chance to talk about it which is that um, he is a gay man and has had to grow up in an india which was a good deal less welcoming of that and then he went to america as a brown man and found the further challenges with that <laughs> i think it's only fair that you tell people about how 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 uh, what sorts of serious challenges you face from both these things and how you've um, how you've come back to india in in a different spirit and a confident spirit you know uh, uh, shashi being a gay man in india was a privilege when i was going go, coming of age because all the young gay men who were hidden in the closet saw in me a young boy they had to protect and had to make proud of his identity 
so they gave me all the freedom while they were denied it in india of the early uh, 90s and uh, late 80s when i arrived in america america was in flux but much more accepting as well my family never never ever challenged me my grandmother my both uh, my grand both grandmothers knew me as being a gay man my grandfather who you met the 92 year old man that shares a birthday with your sister uh, he was not, he loved me he loved charlie the, the families had no issues india has never posed an issue personally for me but i know that things can be difficult both in india and, and america for people who are gay around the world my mother once said to me that baba it's not that a parent has, uh, is anti you being who you are a parent has to worry that the child not be discriminated not be hurt not find difficulties in the path of their life the life is bad enough for any human being so if you're a little different society must to life with you so as a parent you worry for your child not to change them but to give them that comfort that you're worried of them being a little different may uh, then cause some angst in their lives so my parents never troubled me my brother samir my sister seema both of their spouses couldn't be more loving my publisher yogi he said to me write what you want he asked me to just share my story as a brown man in america it was much more challenging than being gay in india or being gay in america my speaking with an accent that wasn't the american accent my uh, being indian and trying to cook french or american or uh, foods other than not indian were more of a challenge in in america than they would be in india so i think I, i've always been the other as you i think i've also lived that life and i've enjoyed it because as far as creativity goes when you're the other you're being slapped in so many different directions that you learn to a take them uh, as in your uh, stead no but i was luckier than you shining. I was luckier than you because at the United Nations everybody is from different country and different background. No, so but, I but, was not having to interact with American society as much as you had. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. being brown in America was not my issue. I was an Indian at the UN which was cool. <laughs> and you and you actually made Indians very proud Shashi. When I first met you I my I was in cloud 9 because I said oh my god this is the greatest Indian walking on the planet. Encyclopedic, charming, brilliant. a uh, humanist uh, you made us all proud and i'm so grateful that you're back in india and i can't wait to see you keep using your words to heal all of us and bring us all together keep you're writing to and keep reading me to listen write. some people are asking a very valid question where do they get your book instamatic how do they order it how do they find it they can, can you, you can that? go to in, you can go to instamaticthebook.com and from there you can go to amazon or kindle kindle will have the book one of the things my publisher yogi suri has very kindly suggested we do is to give 50% of the books sale price to the prime minister's fund shashi so every book that you buy will give 50% of the proceeds to the prime minister of india for the uh, covid relief fund and it's uh, around 700 and change uh, so it's not in america it would have cost a lot more the uh, production value of our book in print has been so exceedingly um, uh, forbidding but yogi has never said no the paper we used it, it will come come out later in the year but the book is truly a labor of love for my publisher and my part and my family's part my charlie my parents my siblings they've all made me stay alive stay believing stay healthy so that i could tell a story and keep living so that's the book and that's the reason i uh, shared it and yogi has been an amazing publisher to be with and you for your generosity in writing the forward did you actually read the book or did somebody of course i did how can i write a knowledgeable forward without reading the book you weak wicked guy how can i i can't pen a review of house of celeste without eating there same logic you have to look into I, the book I, and your, see the your, picture shashi your letter that came with the forward and the forward that you wrote had my mom and i both in tears and we remembered my father because of it my mom said he wrote with the tenderness of a parent he wrote with the affection of an adult an elder and uh, we could tell that you read every word of it and what you quoted from what i gave you was i didn't pay notice to it because you know you don't read your own work but then i went back and i said wow shashi picked such a beautiful part did i really write it you had me in tears as well thank you thank you Well, I, I must say that um, uh, I'm very pleased that some of the proceeds are going to go to charity. I'm not personally a fan of the PM Cares Fund, 
the Prime Minister's regular relief fund is probably better because it's audited by the Controller and Audit Auditor General of India and it's, it's actually a, a legally established fund. PM Cares has been established as a private trust. Many we, of us believe we put it in the fund you said. We put it into the fund you said. That's easy enough. Excellent. But the idea so once again, India everyone. India... Beg your pardon? No, I'm just saying once again to everyone, Suvir Saran's book is called Instamatic. You can get it on instamaticthebook.com. You can get it on amazon.com. You can get it on Kindle. And, uh, uh, and frankly, as far as the good work that Suveer is doing, he is a world-class chef, and you should try his restaurant in Gurgaon, the House of Celeste, when lockdown is over. Till then, if you want to dip into his mind and heart, even though you can't get his cooking, go on to... Um, uh, uh, having a close look at um, Instamatic by Suvir Saran, photographs taken on an iPhone, short essays, very attractive book. Well, I think our time is up, Suvir. Yes, thank you, Dr. Great to see you, and, and um, really I'm so glad that our technical difficulties at the, big, at the beginning have been overcome. And to all those asking all the political questions, this wasn't the idea of this particular show. Um, I know that dozens and dozens of comments came in about uh, various political issues. Maybe at some point we'll do an Instagram chat on politics, but not just yet. This is all about Suveer. We're very proud to launch his book, Instamatic. Congratulations, Suveer. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you.